final day. We're hiking four kilometers into Santiago. And I we finally made my dream of hiking in the dark. So this headlamp I got from my dad will be helpful. Oh, Thank yeah. you, Uncle Jim. I have calculated that over three weeks we have hiked, you have almost hiked 150 miles. I have hiked 150 miles. I've hiked about 200 miles. And here we are. It was, it was not the 350 we set out for. <laughs> but, so idealistic. <laughs> so. But it was enough. And it's what we so could do. And I feel good about it because it's 200 more than I would have done if I had not come on this journey of teaching us perseverance and rest so there you have it and we are almost there emily has become the photographer for all the pilgrims it's like the third person who's asked her and i'm just standing back here like have fun there it is well that's the that's actually not the cathedral it's right behind it we're about to go after emily finishes her new photography deal We are here. We made it. We made it. We were processing how we feel. It's kind of a strange, strange thing because you know you're supposed to feel a certain way. And yet, what is that certain way? Accomplishment, relief, excitement. For me, it's just wonder. I feel like I just am in wonder and awe that we're here. And we also realized we have our burden rock still. <laughs> And in classic uh, family style, <laughs> we carried our burden too long, <laughs> and now we don't know where to leave it. So, what are we thinking? At the altar. Sneak it in, just put it at Jesus' feet. <laughs> we got, we got it all the way in. Because then we haven't really quite let go of achievement. Top of the world. No. We did the best job, because we brought it all the way. <gasps> I think maybe we could leave it. What if we put it up there, like near that little fountain? It's like at the foot of the cathedral. Yeah. I feel good about that. I do too. Okay. Well, let's go. Here let's we go. go. This came all the way from Seattle, Washington. We had uh, switched back and forth holding it, and then the last couple days I held the soap. She held her rock because they weigh about the same. <laughs> so, one for uh, cleansing, one for letting go of. Here we are. We have prayed and we are ready to lay it down. So it really wasn't that hard of a process. You just scanned a barcode and then you put in your information and you got a number. Now we're in line. And we were told on the way, like, we have to plan it every time. Like crazy lines. Maybe it's just gonna be yeah, But this is like not that bad. So we're gonna get our certificate and then be done.
to just share a few reflections on the story of the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. Uh, I've been really pondering and reading that story over and over during this trip, and it seemed like the perfect story to reflect on as I went on this 200 mile journey, uh, because it's a story about two disciples who leave Jerusalem and they're on their way to Emmaus and their hopes have been dashed they are, I'm sure, feeling sad, disappointed, shocked, in mourning, in grief, uh, because in their minds, Jesus is still dead. They don't know he's resurrected. They are leaving the city after he's been crucified, and they're talking about the things that have happened, and then Jesus appears, and he walks beside them, and they don't know it's Jesus. He just joins them on their journey, and he begins to open up the scriptures to them. Uh, and they're like, you don't know about the things that have happened? And he's like, tell me. And so he enters into a relationship with them. He wants to hear about the events of the past couple days through their perspective. And then he starts to open up scripture to them. And there's just something so beautiful about how Jesus doesn't stop them on the way. He comes alongside of them. He joins them. He doesn't surprise them. He doesn't reveal himself right away so that they stop their journey. He just begins to walk with them. Even when they don't know it's him, he is with them on the way. And it's not until the breaking of bread when they invite him in to have dinner with them and he breaks bread that they realize who he is. And I think there's something really powerful about that because it's almost like, at least one interpretation in my mind, is that it's almost like Jesus is showing them what it now looks like to follow the resurrected Jesus. It looks like walking with him on the way. It looks like being in active relationship with him, learning from him, sharing with him. Because that's the power of the covenantal God, right? He, he humbles himself to enter into relationship with us. So as I've been walking along this way, all the way to this cathedral, I've just been struck by the unexpected ways I've met Jesus along the way in people, in nature, in my own contemplation, and even in all the things that felt like mistakes or setbacks, he was there too. And it's made me really think about what does it mean to be a pilgrim, not just on the Camino, but in life. Because I think it's easy to think that a pilgrimage is all about getting to the destination, when it is really more, at least as I've come to see it, about the purpose and identity that being a pilgrim gives you. This is beautiful and I'm so happy to be here, but this is, this is not what it's all about, was just arriving here and being done. For me, it's been about the way. Every day, people wish you buen camino, good way. And it's been about the pilgrim culture and what does it mean to walk on the way? What does it mean to be a pilgrim? From the moment that you start the pilgrimage to the end, you're given this identity. And then there's this pilgrim culture you're invited into where you help each other out, where you keep going, where you even practically eat well, sleep early, take care of yourself, get up, hike, meet people, follow the yellow arrows, do it again. You're given this identity, this purpose, this set of directions, and this way you're supposed to be in the world or on this path. Well, it is really starting to rain now, so I might have to cut this short, but basically I've just been reflecting on why people are drawn to the journey. Why are we, why do so many, look at them all, hundreds and thousands, uh, I read 350,000 pilgrims, uh, at least in 2019, came and did this. And why are we drawn on this journey to put ourselves through miles and miles and miles of walking uh, and sleeping in hostels? And, and you know, it's, it's, it's cool, but it's tough. Why do we do this? I think there's something about movement, about going forward, about the purpose and identity that comes with being a part of this way together. All of our problems are short term, and I don't feel like the spirit of anxiety and depression and lack of purpose and meaning is here on the Camino because we all know who we are and we all have support and we're all excited to be here and we know where we are going and we know not only where we are going but how we want to live and be in this world as we go and I think when it comes to how we live our lives outside of this pilgrimage that's why it really matters what kind of way we choose to walk in because we all have a path we all have a Camino that we are walking on the set of guidelines and values and beliefs that we live our life our lives by and so what is the way for you for me what is the way you walk on in your regular life because that is what shapes you more than the destination and i hope to live my life walking in the way of jesus as he taught his disciples to live in kindness and in love and in truth and in 
and in discipline too, you know, that's a huge part of it as well. All this to say, I'm thankful to have gone on this journey with my cousin Emily, with all of you who have watched and with God. And uh, I'm also even more excited now to enter back into the greater pilgrimage of life. So there we have it. My cousin just got back. It's raining a lot. Under the covers. Because I was filming my reflection. Well, what's beautiful, but I finally got the first takeaway coffee. They gave me this little treat. I have no idea what's in it. I'm All right. Go find a sensible would, place to sit. Okay. I was about to say see you on the way, but this way has finished. So see you on the way of life. We have arrived at our hotel, San Miguel. We're very excited to not be in a hostel. We have made it to our luxury hotel. <laughs> we have sheets and plugs. We are very happy to be in hotel beds. Such soft, soft beds. <laughs> I'm even willing to film at this angle to show you how happy we are. Mm -hmm. But I look terrible, so don't film me. Okay, well, I don't want to film myself for much longer than I have to. And tomorrow we are going to spend the day exploring the city and all of its museums and its UNESCO World Heritage Site Old Town area and whatever else we feel like doing. So, good night. <laughs>
if you go to Rome. And now the pilgrimage is coming to an end. I'm gonna get in my taxi, go to the airport, hope it all works out. I'm flying some janky airlines, so I don't know. But the pilgrimage is coming to an end. What are your final words for our viewers slash mothers? <laughs> I think when you strip everything out and you're just left with getting up, walking, eating, sleeping, cleaning your clothes. Yeah. It puts a lot of things into perspective. And yeah. if you look at your thoughts as they sift mm -hmm. up, you can see what really means a lot to you or mm -hmm. what you still have a need to process out. And it's yeah. a helpful process. So I'm excited to take that into the rest of my life. Well, I guess we just take strength in what remains. There we go. A good word to end on. And we will see you next time on A Different Way, but still The Way.